Hey, Father. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing well. So, what story are we getting into today? Get out of town! I love that story! Oh, but Clara doesn't really like that story much. Yeah, okay, call back later. You guys, this week we are talking all about Jonah and the big fish. Oh. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Bible Stories with me, Brianda. Brianda. And of course, joining me behind the wheel for another great uh, and fabulous uh, fishy week, La Clara NYC. <laughs> She's a little nervous, and I the, the listeners are probably confused as to what I'm referring to. Um, per the title of this episode, you guys can see it because you clicked it, because uh, you guys are faithful uh, uh, Bible babes. Thank you. The title is uh, Jonah and the Big Fish. That, I'm sorry, sorry, Clara. Um, I'm right, I'm just we're just we're bracing yourselves. Okay, guys, this is a tough conversation for us. Are we good? Yeah. We're good. Whew. Sorry, guys. Clara had to say a quick prayer. Freaking had an asthma attack. <laughs> the girl's not even asthmatic. <laughs> so we, uh, we 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 got a we we got a situation here. Um, it's one that I have never experienced, and I could have never anticipated. I will be honest mm -hmm. with you. Um, w w we're gonna refrain from using the term that most people know, Jonah and the blank. We're not going to say it because, <clears throat> Clara, why don't, why don't you let us know a little bit, just a little, just a tiny little, what, what am I, please, it'd be better if you say it. I, I have this very irrational fear, phobia of that particular animal. I don't know where it comes from. I've never seen one in real life. I just... Okay. Just the word, like, I can't even hear the word, like, the, the idea of it, like, right now, talking about, like, this is going to be a tough episode, because the idea of it, of course, if you say the the word, it's it makes it worse, but the idea of it is like, I just Oh, I just my can't. honey, I and I, I hate, I, 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 okay, I don't know if this is, like, the, the, I'm such a, I don't know, I really care about my friends, my family, like, like, it doesn't matter, and I hate making them uncomfortable, so... With that being said, we are going to, we are going to, you know, pummel through this episode, you know, faith first. We can do this, Clara. We can do this. It may seem silly to other people. It's not silly, okay? Um, I'm learning about this phobia. I actually researched before I came in. Like a prepared partner should. When you're in relationships with people, we should not judge what they experience. We should do our research on our own and be open and compassionate and patient and understanding. Thank you. So, I really, really appreciate this because I don't, I don't, I really don't know if it wasn't like this or if it wasn't with a friend like you, like if this was just a job, I would have probably lost my job today. Like, oh, wow. I don't care. I can't, I can't deal with it. Like I was, I told my boyfriend once, he was like, oh, we're just going to watch that one. I said, well, you, you try that. You lose a girlfriend. Like, oh, I, you if you're willing to put me through that shit, like, bye. I don't need you. Some people are have really unusual phobias. Some I know, dude, I, hi, Tangie. Did, there's this show on MTV called uh, The Real World or Road Rules. I mean, I used to love them. I used to watch that show. I mean, I was, I was very young and I should not have been watching all of these, like, early 20s people fornicating in nightclubs <laughs> and these, like, you know what they have now? The hype houses. Hype houses is where like TikTokers all live together and they create content. Oh. This was like the hype house before hype house, like the early 2000s road rules. <laughs> but there was this one girl who had a phobia of ketchup. Oh my God. And there was a scene where a guy didn't take it seriously and put ketchup on a plate oh. and like threw it on her or threw it on and got it on oh. or something. Oh my God. And she freaked out. And that mm, girl, listen, listen, I hear sounds. I get it. I don't like crunching snow because it makes me taste earwax. You know what? And this is a weird, this is a weird show. Okay. It's very trippy. Uh, but um, I will say I did my in, my, in doing my research, both for the show and also dealing with certain situations like these, I'll tell you, it wasn't even blank. It wasn't it, the animal, put the animal in the blank. Um, the original Hebrew says nothing about blank. It says uh, big fish. Okay. 
It's referring to a big fish, a big aquatic animal. So they could have been a, a, a balloon fish. That yeah. It's very, very inflated. Okay. Exactly. So for me, it's not even just doing favors. It's being, I like to be as accurate, accurate as possible yeah. to the text. Yeah. So uh, we're going to power on. We got this. We can do this. I'll also say that um, the last two weeks, we have been pretty chatty. And uh, I'll say the last two weeks, we haven't really. It hasn't been about the story. We had our guest last week, which shout out to all the new listeners who are here from D's episode. Bienvenidos, honey. Love you. Thank you so much for supporting. This is incredible. That was such a great pop. Very energizing. Very hopeful for our future. Uh, but then the week before, we like we're talking about Cardi B and OnlyFans, and like you know what I'm saying. So for the listeners that come here for the story, this week's gonna be for you. We're going to just dive right in. Uh, of course, you guys already know um, it's my birthday month. Hey, I don't know if you guys want to maybe like join the Patreon for the month for my birthday. I don't know, whatever. I'm just saying if you want, you know, Claire and I are like bust our booties off doing this every week and we're not making horrible decisions money. We're not on billboards in Times Square yet. You know, we're we're still small. So any little bit helps. But of course, like keep liking, commenting, sharing, supporting us that way is just as helpful, you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, without further ado, let's dive into this week's story. Here we go. Jonah and the big fish. But first, let me give you guys a little bit of information before we dive into the actual book. So the book of Jonah is a four chapter prophetic book uh, authored by Jonah himself. And this story has got to be one of the most famous stories of the Bible. It's up there. Like if the Bible had a top 10, Jonah and the blank are there. It's there. Uh, mostly it's known for being like a, a fable, like a kid's tale uh, or uh, allegory is what our girl uh, Tara Lee Cobble at the Bible Recap calls it. Uh, but I wanted to add this little piece of information. It may be super fantastical, you know, the concept uh, or, or the premise of the story that we all sort of know about. Jonah was most certainly a real prophet who is historically a per like a person who was around. He counseled Jeroboam the second, JJ, JJ, we call him JJ, JJ the second because we know that from 1 Kings. 1 Kings, Jonah was there advising him. And also um, he advised JJ, who was a terrible king, we already know. Uh, he brought the Northern Kingdom of Israel in shambles. I mean, he's, they, he, they were the, the, the number one detractors for Yahweh at that time. And Jonah, being the rebellious prophet that he was at this time, there's written proof of this, told J.J. the second, hey man, you're doing great. The Lord loves this. Yeah, you're doing a great job. The Lord did not say that. And also the Lord did not tell uh, Jonah to prophesy in Israel. Okay. But that we'll get into a little bit later. Another piece of information that leads me to believe that the story of Jonah and the big fish, it may be a little more serious than we think is because my homeboy, my one, my alpha, JC, Jesus, mentions Jonah in the book of Matthew. That's right. Our man, Jesus Christ, mentions the story of Jonah and what happened to him under sea. Mm, I know, I'm excited. Anytime I find like things that Jesus said, I'm like, oh, what else did he say? What else did he say? Mm -hmm. But let's dive into some scripture. Before we get into the story, this is just some bonus scripture, okay? From the book of Matthew. Uh, we're gonna go to Matthew chapter 12, verses 38 to 41. Then some of the teachers of the law and the proud religious law keepers said to Jesus, teacher, we would like to have you do something special for us to see. He said to them, the sinful people of this day look for something special to see. There will be nothing special to see, but the powerful works of the early preacher Jonah. Jonah was three days and three nights in the stomach of a big fish. 
The son of man will be three days and three nights in the grave also. The men of the city of Nineveh will stand up with the people of this day on the day men stand before God. Those men will say these people are guilty because the men of Nineveh were sorry for their sins and turned from them when Jonah preached. And see, someone greater than Jonah is here. That, my friends, came from the mouth of Jesus. So for me, unfortunately, I can't just chuck up the story of Jonah and the blank as a kid's fable. You know, for me, it's, it holds a little more weight, especially if Jesus was talking about it. What? Has a little Pinocchio vibes, no? Uh, what do you mean? Stomach for three days. and Isn't that what happened to Pinocchio? I don't really know. I'm not too familiar with Pinocchio. What is the story of Pinocchio? Is it Pinocchio or someone else? Who who got swollen by one and was living inside of it and then... Jonah? No, no, there was a cartoon, like when we were children. What is Pinocchio about? Pinocchio grows a big nose. I, when he lies. Yeah, that's all I know. I heard that Pinocchio was dark. Like, it's actually dark. Really? Yeah. It's like a dark background all of those little fable stories got a little darkness in them like the authors are probably all crackheads pinocchio got kidnapped no they were like oh i'm this candy and he got kidnapped with other children i think i don't know am i where where do i uh... what are they teaching you in spain <laughs> <laughs> oh no clara's getting teary you guys you and I did the I did Don't you dare comment, tweet, or DM Clara photos or images oh, no. of the word. Because if you do, Clara, where's my where's my camera? Which one? This one. Here. If I find out that you are bullying my girl Clara, I will do something, and I don't know what I'm gonna do yet. I did the coño. Anyways, back to Jonah. Let me give you guys a little backstory on my man Jonah. Jonah was from a town called Geth Hefer in Israel. And he was a, a preacher. Jesus referred to him as a preacher. We know him as a prophet who was instructed by the Lord to prophesy, but unlike other prophets, he was instructed to go to the nation of Nineveh, which is modern day uh, Iran. Some people say it's modern day Iraq, but those are so close, you know, in proximity. Back then, it was an Assyrian region, okay? And if we know anything from Kings and from Chronicles, we know that the Assyrians and Israel were beefing all the time. They were enemies, all right? So when Jonah got news from the Lord that he was to go to Nineveh, he was like, what? What? You, you must be bugging. You want me to go where the evil people are? People that crap on your name. You want me to go there? You're bugging. This is what he said to the Lord. Jonah is one of the only prophets that literally critiques God to his face. Jonah had a mouthful. Oh, oh, throughout Jonah, that's all he does. Let's hop into some scripture so we know exactly what the Lord told uh, Jonah. Mm -hmm. Jonah chapter one, verse two. The Lord says to him, arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and call out against it, for their evil has come before me. And by great city, he means it's heavily populated. Not that it was uh, fantastic, good, or great any of those. Great in size. No, great in size. 120,000 people back then. It was huge. So could you imagine how, wh when there is evil in Nineveh, there's, that's a lot of people doing evilness. And that's a close proximity to Israel, baby. And we, I, listen, I don't know what the Lord knows, but the Lord knows a lot. So he must, he's thinking five steps ahead. He's thinking, man, these people could seep into my, to Israel. And Israel was already evil, right? Especially under JJ II. So he may have been, you know, putting out fires before they started, you know, in terms of Israel. 
So this is what Jonah does. Jonah says, Psh, I'm not going to listen to you, actually. Huh? Not only am I not going to Nineveh, I'm going to go the complete opposite direction of Nineveh. I'm going to go to uh, an, a nation called Tarnish. Tarnish is modern day Spain. Hey, Woo! my girl, Clara. Clara, uh, flying maracas here. Um, <laughs> yes. And Rosalia. Rosalia. Uh, so he goes to modern day Spain by approaching a bunch. There were a group of mariners on a boat that were go headed that direction. So he pays them a fare and says, bruh, can I go, please? And they ends up going, uh, they end up being a little trepidatious, a little uh, apprehensive about letting him on the boat. But they, uh, a dove comes and they're like, oh my God, they believe in signs because the people on the boat didn't believe in Yahweh the Lord. Mm. They believed in multiple gods and all these things, in signs like if a dove lands on your head, all that means you're coming on the, on the boat. Mm. Okay. So, so Jonah's on his way on the boat, here we have Jonah's first tick against the Lord. He's not only defying what the Lord is telling him to do, he is adding salt on that wound and he's going the opposite direction, as far away from where the Lord needed him as possible. Hi, Tangi, how many times do we do that in life? Sure. We know we're supposed to do this and not only do we not do it, we do the complete opposite, oh. deviating from our plan, from our chosen path that the Lord has for us. Almost like so, voluntarily signing up for spiritual warfare. I, why do we do that? It's like we're excited by chaos. Yeah, like, what is it actually? Because um, you know you're not supposed to be doing it. Well, I will say that in certain cases, we don't know it's wrong. Until, no, but sometimes you choose to do the opposite in purpose. Which is what Jonah, in Jonah's case, he's deliberately choosing to do the opposite. And you know you shouldn't, but you still... Well, it's because sometimes we like to play God and we like to prove it to ourselves that, oh, no, we are right. Mm. We could do it. Yeah, it's like we're addicted to proving ourselves right. Mm. We can do it. And that's a whole lot of pressure for yourself. And also entitlement, I would say it's a... Like a, like a superior God complex within ourselves, within our own lives. We want to prove to ourselves that we have so much control over what happens, over the result. Ha, so not only am I going to do what's intuitively feels wrong, I'm going to make it work. It's like being in a relationship with a, with a toxic person. Mm. I'm going to change it. Uh, no, 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 no. To, the, next week is a new week. I'm going to change it. And look. We all been there. We all been there. <laughs> Girl, I have been there. <laughs> And I'm still, you know, dealing with the effects of it to this day, you know, like not to say that all of the damages were irreparable, but you carry some of those things, Ooh, right? For life. Mm -hmm. It shapes you. Some people have, you know, they have children or, you know, bad dealing, bad financial dealings, bad financial partnerships, and so, et cetera, et cetera, you know? Now the Lord sees this, of course. And the Lord <laughs> does something that he sure has done in my life, I'll tell you. The Lord knows and sees that Jonah is on this boat with a bunch of non-believers, right? A bunch of crystal wearing, uh, like believers, they're worshiping rocks there. You know what I'm saying? And he starts this massive windstorm. I'm talking about viene de repente, like out of nowhere, while they're already at sea. And at this point, Jonah is sleeping, but the Lord starts a huge storm. The mariners on the ship, are, or is it mariners? Mariners, mariners, my English is with ra -ta -ta -ta. The marineros, no? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the marineros. The marineros. They are freaking out. Let's hop into some scripture to paint the picture of what's going on. Jonah chapter one, verse five. Then the mariners were afraid and each cried out to his God and they hurled the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten it for them. But Jonah had gone down into the inner part of the ship and had lain down and was fast asleep. So the captain came and said to him, what do you mean, you sleeper? Arise, call out to your God. Perhaps the God will give us a... Th 
a thought to us that we may not perish. Here we have, so here's the, here's the image. These guys are trying to figure out who's the one to blame between all of them. This has, someone had to have done this because this storm came out of nowhere. They start literally dumping cargo just to make the ship lighter. Oh my. You know what it reminds me of? Hi, Tangi again. It reminds me of when we, we know that we've messed up. So we start like, like doing stuff. Okay, well, well, we'll fix it this way. We'll start doing it ourselves, right? We have two things that I want to dissect here. The mariners taking the, the, the cargo off the ship and also Jonah sleeping during a storm. Let me, I'll start with the, uh, the marineros, whatever, and the mariners. One, a third one. Oh, cool. Done. Oh, let's share. Ooh, Bible study. So when the mariners are... Have you ever like done something naughty or forgotten to do something and quickly tried to like put crap together? Por ejemplo, hi, Tangie. My mom, we all know this, you guys. If y'all had, you know, immigrant parents, you, you will definitely know what I'm talking about. When your mom, or, or in my case, my mom would tell me after school to take out the frozen meat from the freezer because by the time they arrive from work, they're going, it's going to be thawed and they're going to be able to cook it. You know, Brianda, sácame la carne que voy a cocinar cuando llega. Okay, cool. And then when every time I wouldn't, because I don't even know what I was doing, watching the road rules, real world's challenge with the girl who's afraid to catch up. That's what I was doing instead of taking out the meat from the freezer, like a good daughter. <laughs> so you know what I would do? My mom got home at six. Microwave. Uh, no, I would not do that, even though I should have, but no, I didn't. Um, my mom comes home at six at 5.45. I would take the meat out of the freezer. Crap, I forgot the, the meat. Call your take carne. It. Yes, and I would put it in like hot water, trying to, oh. and blowing on it like, Lord, please help me because my mom is going to beat me with la correa. I am going to be done. Like, it, that reminds me of what the mariners are doing with the, well, the ship's already sinking. We might as well do something, right? And then the second thing I want to dissect is, oh, don't mind me scratching a hive. Uh, the second thing I want to dissect is the sleeping Jonah. Uh, it reminds me of how sometimes we'd rather just shut it off. We know that there's a, a storm happening and we feel we feel it moving us around and messing up our space. Maybe if I sleep for an hour longer, it'll disappear. Maybe I could maybe if wow. I don't look at it, it'll it'll mean that it's not really happening. And that's not the case. That's very deep that you say that, you know. I had a completely different, um, I don't know. What's your interpretation? Interpretation of it, of the Jonah sleeping bit, which wasn't the third thing that I was going to say, but oh, you caught me now. Because I thought how, como que pasota, como from Jonah, nah? like everyone's here doing their best to, to like not to sink the ship and you're just there sleeping. Careless. And I tell you, careless people really, really mm. get me. You know, like, it's, it's one of the things that can, que me puede. Mm. It's like, but you, instead of accusing him, because me, I'm accusing Jonah. Everyone here trying to, like, save the boat and save their life. Uh, look at you here slipping. Mm. Tranquilo, no? Mm. You're, well, you're that, right? You're comfortable over there? Well, Clara, what's our tagline? Where's God in the story? Yeah, you, that's why I that's go to that. That's me. And the, the third thing that I was going to say... The, the interpretation thing is like how sometimes when we do what Jonah do, you know, like he knows he's not supposed to go there. He still chooses to go there but con, con su with his thing that he wants mm. to do. But you're putting these people that have nothing to do with your life and nothing to do with your shit, that they're actually doing you a favor. favor. You put them at risk. Mm -hmm. And we do that sometimes too. Like we make these choices to like, do what we're not supposed to, look the other way and do what we're not supposed to, whatever. And that affects the people around us a lot. A word. We can hurt them so bad. Yeah. Without realizing or caring. In Jonah, it chaps, we're still in the same chapter. Chapter one, uh, verses eight to nine, the mariners are, they, they put two and two together and they're like, hold on. It's Jonah. Jonah's the only one that's not out here <laughs> freaking out. Come out here, tell what's going on. Let's go into scripture. Jonah chapter one, verses eight to nine. Then they said to him, tell us on whose account this evil has come upon us. What is your occupation? 
(laughs) And where do you come from? What is your country? And of what people are you? And he said to them, I am Hebrew and I fear the Lord the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. And when the mariners heard that, they went, wait, you're Hebrew? You're from Israel? You, that, that God is what's, who's doing this? They start, and immediately, ooh, and that, that happens. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it reminds me, it reminds me of before my sister became a Christian. My mom and I were already on our faith walk. And there were some certain things occurring where like, when you're met at a place and you don't have faith, but there are people of faith around you, you're like, what? Use your faith and help us out. You know, I remember one time my sister was going through a really tough time. She had a loved one in the, in the hospital and dude, my sister didn't believe at that time. She had never prayed a day in her life. Mm-hmm. But let me tell you something. We were in the car. And my sister said, pray, pray, bitch, pray. <laughs> I do that all the time to you. Brianna, <laughs> pray to your Lord, please. Please pray. Exactly. <laughs> pray to your God. <laughs> well, I will say, though, I will say, the Mariners ended up kind of revealing that they had a little bit of respect for the Lord, even though they were worshiping other, they were idol I mean, worshipers. After that storm, if you don't have no respect for whatever or whoever's causing that. Mm-hmm. Well, well, after they find out that he was a follower of Yahweh, the Mariners started following him. They no, 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 no. Well, no, well, no, yes, they do, but not yet. They ended up asking Jonah, okay, Jonah, now that we know that, what's the solution? Like, is there anything mm-hmm. that we can do? Uh, Jonah chapter one, verse 11, then they said to him, what shall we do to you that the sea may quiet down for us? For the sea grew more and more tempestuous. He said to them, pick me up and hurl me into the sea. Then the sea will quiet down for you. Clara, stop laughing. For I know it is uh, it is because of me that this great tempest has come upon you. So basically, dump me. Yeah. He, so no, oh. but he Jonah literally says, "I'm the reason. I now know why this is happening. It's because I'm not in Nineveh." Once the mariners found out that Jonah said, "Y'all, throw me out. It's me. I'm the culprit. Just throw. Go ahead. And let me die. Throw me out." They were so scared to kill a man of God that they were saying, no, 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 Just one more time. Let's row against it. They kept rowing. They kept rowing like without throwing him out. Oh. Because they, they were so scared, you know? And as they kept rowing, the winds would get stronger. <gasps> and then eventually they were like, okay, maybe he's right. At least he was honest though, Jonah. Well, I, I mean, you know what? It ends up being a little um, cyclical, this thing about Jonah, because he ends, it's it's not that his uh, critique of the Lord's decisions come from a place of dishonesty. I believe that Jonah has a real relationship with the Lord. He is just more in love with himself and his ideas than he is the ideas that the Lord has for his life. He's more married to what he believes to be true. Mm -hmm. And in that there's honesty, right? Like he's operating from that sense of honesty, but honesty not rooted in the Lord, in our religion, in our faith work, is not honest at all. It's proud. It's pride. Mm -hmm. Understood? Yeah. So, of course, the mariners throw our boy Jonah out the boat, and the second his body hits the water... The wind stops and the sea turns still. (laughs) You guys, if y'all saw Clara's face right now, because she knows what's about to happen next. So it was at this point that the Lord prepares a big fish to carefully swallow Jonah's body whole. My co-writer, Bree, shout out Bree, I love you. Thank you so much for everything that you do. Was so diligent with this week's uh, research on the Hebrew words uh, because the text tells us that the Lord prepared a big fish to swallow Jonah's body in the water. And she found some pretty neat information and I'd love to read it. I'd love to share it with you guys. So uh, she wanted to point out the fact that 
God prepared or appointed this fish for Jonah. And that serves as a proof that even the wind and seas obey him. And because God prepared this fish to the point where Jonah could actually inhabitate in it for three days without being like digested, you know, that's evidence that God can put you in the midst of trouble and have nothing harm you, nothing touch a hair on your head, you know? And it also proves that the Lord will put us in a position for us to grow. Whether it's comfortable or not is outside of our control. Tell me about it. You know, yeah. Well, listen, Clara just started her day job or job job, and it's not fun, you know. Um, yeah. Talk about this episode. <laughs> well, this is awkward. <laughs> so we've got two situations for you, actually. <laughs> wow, you didn't have fun at work, and now you come to the, your other work and also are tortured. No, it's not about torture. It's about growth. <clears throat> well, no, because phobia is different. I think phobia is. Well, I have a phobia of driving. Can you call him, ask him where is this about, why he put this shit on me? <sighs> Lord, where do phobias come from? It's like little kid asking, where do babies come from? But why? <laughs> but, but why? But why? But how? But where does it, but why? <laughs> I was going to say, I have a phobia of driving. Oh, you do? Yeah. Um, but I got my license. Like I got, I had to get over it to get out of you a license. Yes, I'm telling you, I'm not watching. Nothing. You're not going to go blank watching. No. Got it. No. You got it. <laughs> so now we're at the book of Jonah chapter two, and he is actually in the belly of the big fish. He's there for three days and three nights. And per Jonah's writing, it doesn't point to him you know, losing his mind or this being metaphorical. Don't ask me what I think. I, I still haven't come up with a decision yet myself. But I do know that he was in an uncomfortable position. He was in a position of isolation, forced isolation, and despair. And that is something that I can relate to. So whether or not it was a big fish or not, I'm using that scenario and figuring out where God is in this story. And we know in verse uh, verses one through 10, on the last day, Jonah gives this like poetic, almost, almost psalm-like prayer to the Lord. Meanwhile, we, we, what we know about him, he's rebellious. He, he's honest and dishonest at the same time, and he's proud, right? That's what we know about our boy Jonah. But on this third day, there's been a shift. And um, when I say psalm, I mean psalm, like David, King David, who wrote the psalms when he was out in the wilderness, when people were about, uh, searching for him to kill him. He was out alone with his own thoughts in isolation, in despair, in an uncomfortable situation. Let's hop into scripture so we can read more about Jonah's prayer. Jonah chapter two, we're gonna, we're gonna read a, a bit, so grab your snacks. Chapter, um, verses one to 10. Uh, then Jonah prayed to the Lord, his God, from the belly of the fish, saying, I called out to the Lord out of my distress, and he answered me, and you heard my voice, for you cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the flood surrounded me. All your waves and your billows passed over me. Then I said, I am driven away from your sight, yet I shall again look upon your holy temple. Hmm. The waters closed in over me to take my life. The deep surrounded me. Weeds were wrapped about my head at the roots of the mountains. I went down to the land whose bars closed upon me forever, yet you brought up my life from the pit. O oh Lord, my God, when my life was fainting away, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came to you, into your holy temple. Those who pay regard to vain idols forsake their hope of steadfast love. But I, with the voice of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you what I have vowed I will pay 
Salvation belongs to the Lord. That hits every time, you know. Oh. Uh, and when he references steadfast love and that hope, that's not something that we should just brush over. Um, here we have uh, hope. The original Hebrew, they say that hope means expectation and steadfast, steadfast means firmly fixed. So when we hear Jonah say those who pay regard to vain idols forsake their hope of steadfast love, I'm assuming that Jonah in that place of kind of like the in-between, he may be thinking about the people. Maybe the mariners who are worshiping crystals, idols, other things. Maybe Nineveh, where he was supposed to be. All those people who were forsaking the Lord and worshiping false idols and false gods. That love is not steadfast. That love is not fixed. That love depends on, I mean, the season. That's not hope. How can you expect anything from something that's not steadfast, right? There's only one thing that can provide that kind of steadfast hope and that steadfast love, and that's from God. One God, too, right? Because these idol worshipers always worship multiple. There's always multiple, right? I don't know. And he came to this conclusion on that third day. Hmm. And Jesus refers to that moment in Jonah's experience to him being in the grave. Huh. Sit on that, guys. Let me know in the comments what you think. Does it make you think of prison? Prison? Or jail? <sighs> sure. In Sure. Feel, like you did something wrong. You're on lockdown by yourself in isolation until it hits you and you like realize and like you leave aside all your ego and all your mm -hmm. pride and all of that and then you mm -hmm. kind of like see the value of stuff and you redeem yourself and then the moment you understand that you are released from yes in that and you know what I'll use the prison analogy here because it's a form of captivity that's outside of our control mm -hmm. and You, you know, Hi Tanji, you always hear uh, ex-inmates, you know, when they're out now, and they never speak about their time in prison, uh, you know, with like, woe is me, like, oh, F prison, F that. Mm. They typically speak about it like, I'm actually grateful for that time. Uh, and I always found that fascinating. And the, oh, th let's bring it back. Let's bring it back to Jonah because a miraculous thing ended up happening to his heart. I don't know if that would have happened if he wasn't in that, in the depths of the sea inside that animal. And sometimes, hmm, sometimes we need to sit still and listen, even in our own despair, to feel any kind of, um, to feel the value. And sometimes it doesn't happen until after, you know, hindsight is 2020 hindsight. That's when you really see the value. Like those inmates, I'm sure that there were days in there where they really did wish that they were free, mm. but at being out, they now see the value in, in that time, you know? Also, sometimes it takes, um, for you to be in a really, really bad and, and, and environment fucked up situation to, Open your eyes and, and absolutely. Oh my goodness! Dejarte tonterías and you know that Thanksgiving prayer that Jonah gave, and that Thanksgiving prayer that probably every inmate has. I would love to speak to an inmate actually, or a couple or something here on the show. Let's bring. That. I would like to see if any were non-believers and then became believers after. You know what I'm saying? I just want to know. I want to know what their spirit, what 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 that does to someone's spirit. Forced isolation. Wait, and high tangy off the high tangy, high tangy squared. How, <laughs> how many of us 
dealt with our own prison during lockdown. Oh, yeah. The first year of lockdown. Huh. A lot of my rich friends had no idea what us in the trenches had to go through. Like, or people who lost jobs or people that had to get multiple jobs during a pandemic that we didn't even know what the extent, how the grave it was, you know? Mm -hmm. Imagine that. Whew. It, send, it, it sends chills down my spine, man. And I'm so, so grateful every day. I'm so grateful every day that, oh man, that I, I, I that's why those prayers really get to me because I remember what my life was without it. Mm. And man, it was grim. It was. I don't know if I, where I would be if I didn't have Jesus, honestly, or that, that faith, that faith in God. That faith that this is happening for me, not to me, you know? It's cool to know that. It makes you feel less alone. Less alone in your despair, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying, what I'm saying, what I'm saying? But yeah, COVID was some people's big fish moment. Sure. So let's uh, transition into uh, chapter, the last chapters of Jonah. So Jonah's out of the fish. He's out, the, 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 the big fish vomits him out, <laughs> which is so cool that, the, that even, even, even if this is metaphorical, the fact that the Lord controls that fish in such a way that Jonah is not missing a single limb. Sure, he got a little dinged up, Sure, he smells bad right now. Sure, he's got fish guts on his shoulder, but he is all in one piece. The fact that the Lord can even coordinate something, like a, a you know what I'm saying? A dismount like that is, I think, deep too. Ugh, Jonah, oh, the story of Jonah is so rich. Um, so at this point, he knows what he's got to do. The Lord says, listen, bruh, now that we cool, I'm gonna need you to go to Nineveh and do what I had originally set out for you to do, which was to teach these people, okay? God tells Jonah, all right, bro, I mean this, go to Nineveh, okay? He goes out to Nineveh, it takes him three days to get there, and he has to proclaim God's presence among this great city, okay? He's a, he's a prophet at the end of the day, and he prophesies to the king of Nineveh all that he has said. He said that if they don't get their act right, if they don't repent in a real way, all of them, then the same thing that happened in Sodom is gonna happen to them. He's gonna destroy them. Wow. Well, not in those words, but there's going to be <laughs> repercussions. There's going to be serious repercussions. So it's true. And he once the king of Nineveh hears this from Jonah's mouth, boom, I mean, everything begins to change. Oh wow. They they start to make a like they start to flip. Like on the first day Jonah start uh started in the city, the Ninevites already like started be believing in God. How beautiful. How beautiful. Wow. You know, normally it takes a lot longer, you know? And at this point the king had, you know, f uh, not forced, but he made a rule where everyone was to wear, you know, sackcloths and they were making sacrifices to Yahweh. They ended up repenting in a real wow. way. And even then, Jonah fell again. <gasps> yeah, you wanna oh, know why? Oh, I was liking him. <sighs> yeah, well, I was liking him too. I always get excited about them and then they just disappoint me like that. Don't ever lose that, don't oh, ever lose that. Boy. That's a little piece of God. No, don't ever lose that because it's life. That's it life. Like dating. I know. Is Tell like, me about is it, it. Is it him? Boom. No. Every single time. Oh, there's this guy that I'm, oh, I can't help it, Clara. Hi, Tangi. There's this guy that I have a crush on. Ooh. Clara already knows this guy. No, you already know who it is. It's that guy. Yeah. Oh. Anyways, he posted the cutest photo. And I literally. Like this grin. Oh. I I don't even know how we started talking about this, but I do not simp over dudes. I am way too cute to do that. And I don't act on it. I am not like those girls that, I'm not, no, no offense to those girls either. I'm just saying that I'm not someone that, my pride, I'm not motivated by my pride at all. Uh, but he posted that photo and I went, oh my gosh, I don't think I've ever, and I don't even get it. He's not even that cute. 
But I am. Like it's I to you though. It's yeah, not about how he, Yeah. Sometimes it's not about how they look for the rest of the world. It's what they mean to you. I know. And he was eating a freaking bao bun and he was wearing this little jacket. And in my head I went, I want to eat that bao bun <laughs> and I want to wear that red jacket. <laughs> Anyways, let's go back to the Jonah. <laughs> I'm tired of being single. <laughs> I'm tired of being single. <laughs> Being single is my big fish. <laughs> Lord, I need you to change me. Oh, yes, he will. Okay, back to this, back to the story. Like we already know, they always fall, right? And yeah, they always fall. <laughs> they always fall. <laughs> you know, um, uh, one of the Bible babes. Um, oh gosh, uh, um, Hova, Jova. Shout out to Jova. We love you. Shout out to Wifey too. He suggested we get a soundboard so we can just say, they always fall. I want you to, I want you to do that every time. And I'm going to remind you. Oh yeah, I know. So Jonah falls and he was the one that prophesied to uh, Nineveh and the king of Nineveh that they needed to change. Otherwise there'd be repercussions. They do that in a real way quickly. And even then he has his hangups. He says that they've done too much damage to the Israelites that they've, it's too late for them. Oh, they're way too big. It's not gonna be enough, you know? Uh, and he tells the Lord this and he says, you're, I mean, they're, they're repenting, but you're still gonna murk them, right? Like they're still gonna die, right? And the Lord's like, no. There's the man who just did the opposite of what the Lord had told him. Well, a lot of... Cr nerd. Ooh. <gasps> oh, high tangent. A, lo nerd. a lot of Christians. I'm sorry. I have to call out my brothers and sisters sometimes, okay? A lot of Christians do that same thing. The same thing that Jonah's doing. Wow. Where they're supposed to be happy and thankful that they're opening the hearts and that they're softening some hardness, you know? They're, they're hearts of people. But sometimes... They remember the people that they used to be and they say, oh no, it's too late for them. And I say that from experience. When I was an atheist, I was friends with a Catholic girl, very close, she's one of my best friends. And I, I almost felt more enthusiasm from her when we were in debate mm. than when I would ask a more gentle question. Mm. And that's interesting too. That's something that I'm I'm kind of clocking right now. Jonah was being one of those Christians that uh, uh, is judgmental and holds on to the past of others with so much like preciousness. It's like, who are you? A few days ago, you were inside the belly of a big fish. You like, almost killed these poor marineros. Hipócrita, hypocrite, hypocrite. You know. Instead of bringing others closer to God with gentleness, humility, patience, and understanding and love, you're doing the opposite. All because you're more in love with yourself, with your ideas and your ideas of what a relationship with God is. Mm. And that is T, okay? Hmm. So the Lord says, no, I will not. I'm, that's not the point. The point is we wanted them to repent and they did that. Why are you getting so mad for? <laughs> so Jonah being a little brat goes off to the outskirts of Nineveh and he says, kill me. I want to die. Actually. I want to die. I want to die. The fact that you have so much mercy on people that were evil, get, kill me now. We are, we're not on the same. This is what he's saying to God. So you know what he does? He stoops up on a little mountainside on some grass. It's hot. It's hot out. And he's just like, oh, I'm about to die. I'm dying. In the blazing sun too. It's almost like he positions himself to, to die. And uh, you know what the Lord does? The Lord, the Lord is an extraordinary Lord, uh, our extraordinary father. He uh, hmm, prepares a plant to grow over Hmm? Jonah <laughs> to, to provide shade for him. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Like I that? don't know. I find it so fun. <laughs> well, listen, it's it is kind of sort of funny and sort of not because uh, you know, for the first time, what when the plant covers him and gives him shade, because at this point, I mean his he was burning, his skin was burning, he was about to die out in the sun. Mm. And the Lord provides him with shade and we get a glimpse for the first time in the whole book of Jonah. Jonah's happy. Yeah. He feels relief. Mm. 
And I think that was really nice of us to to finally we see, you know, it's like, um, oh man, what's that Christmas guy that's always grouchy? The Ebenezer Grinch. Scrooge. The Grinch? No, I mean not the Grinch too. He actually ended up being a softy, right? But um, no, I was thinking of Ebenezer Scrooge. Google him if you want. Uh, but uh, you know, it, it's nice to have this Ebenezer Scrooge of a character uh, have a moment of happiness. And like I said, Jonah's a short book. And in a couple verses that changes because the Lord ends up preparing a worm that ends up devouring the plant. And all of a sudden he no longer has shade mm -hmm. and he starts to feel the discomfort again. Mm -hmm. Just when he got comfortable, mm -hmm. big headed maybe. Mm -hmm. Listen, well, Let's go to, let's read some scripture hmm. as we're winding down. So Jonah chapter four, verses seven to nine describes this warm moment. And it goes, but when dawn came up the next day, God appointed a worm that attacked the plant so that it withered. When the sun rose, God appointed a scorching east wind and the sun beat down on the head of Jonah so that he was faint. It is better for me to die than to live. Hmm. And in Jonah chapter four, verses eight to 11, God says to Jonah, do you do well to be angry for the plant? And he said, yes, I do well to be angry, angry enough to die. And the Lord said, you pity the plant for which you did not labor, nor did you make it grow, which came into being in a night and perished in a night. Ah. Oh. And should not I pity Nineveh, the great city in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know their right hand from their left and also much cattle? That's how the book ends. There's so much, there's so much here in that. I love the fact that they ended it like that abruptly. I love songs that end abruptly like that. Oh my God, hi Tangi, Dolly Parton, one of my favorite Dolly Parton songs. She has a song called uh, The Bridge. The bridge so high, the bridge so low. The bridge is where it all started, oh, on the bridge. It needs to be bigger. And at the end of the song uh, follows a story. She's one of the best storytellers of all time. And at the end of it, it's an abrupt end of a woman who's pregnant with a man who left her's baby. The song ends abruptly in a way that no one knows what's happening. I think they do that in Jonah, in Jonah deliberately hmm. so that we, we see the abruptness in like in life, like it, it takes in a moment, in a moment, something can shift. And, and not only that, here it ends with the Lord providing us questions that make us question our own selves, our own blind spots, our own flaws. Here you are angry at, at feeling forsaken for yourself, self-pitying yourself. You pity the plant for which you did not labor. You did not make it grow. I did. Here you are telling, feeling angry about what you're, the, 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 the fortune of other people. You did not create them. You are not their God. You're not even your God. Mm. You know? And then it ends. It ends it at that. There's nothing else that needs to be said. Sit on that. Is it, is it, is it uncomfortable? Yeah. Sit on that note. Mm. Ooh, the Lord makes us really sit in it. Sit. Sit and listen. Oof. Which brings me to this week's moral of the story. You ready for it? Let's go. Moral of the story is God is so merciful and patient. We saw that today with the way the Lord was merciful with Jonah. But let's not sleep on the mercy he gave the nation of Nineveh. He offered them opportunities to learn more about him, despite their hardened hearts. In fact, the Lord's mercy and love for his own enemies is the exact reason why Jonah resented him in the first place. But if you're a true Bible babe, then you've reviewed over 18 books in the Bible already. And I'm almost positive you can see something that maybe... Jonah didn't at the time, and that is that the Lord is preparing us. 
When God is preparing us for what he has in store, it can be challenging for us to be wholeheartedly obedient, like angsty teenagers who don't listen to their parents. When God tells us not to do something, or rather to do something, we often do the opposite. We doubt or take a beaten path that leads us down spiritual warfare and despair. But in that despair and beyond that doubt is God's patience in correcting us, in healing us because he loves us. He has called all of us to inherit his kingdom. We just have to be still and, and listen. Be still and listen. Be still and listen. Be still and listen. Be still and listen. Hey, Father. How'd I do? Yeah, I, this weird thing just happened. I feel like I entered the metaverse. I don't know. What, what, what was that about? 